guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2021 Subaru Impreza, courtesy of Apple Subaru in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I wanted to check this one out today because this is actually an all-wheel drive compact car for under $20,000. And those are rare these days. Not only that, the Impreza does give you great reliability just check out consumer reports for that great resale value which is very typical for Subaru in general and there have been actually a couple changes for the 2021 Impreza as well and so of course I will be going over those changes as well as everything else about this one today so what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so as you can imagine there are actually several different trim levels for the 2021 Impreza first one being the base starting at $18,795 premium sedan starting at $22,195 sport sedan for $23,595 that's actually the one we're in today and the limited sedan starting at $25,895 and so I did emphasize sedan for all of those prices however there is a hatchback form of the Impreza as well if you wanted to go with the hatchback for the base premium and limited at $500 for the sport at $400 but essentially regardless of trim level power plant on the Impreza is going to be the same powering this little beast is going to be a two liter direct injected four cylinder boxer engine putting out 152 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 145 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 rpm power sent to all four wheels through Subaru's legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system that power is sent to the ground through a five-speed manual which comes standard on the base trims and actually the sport hatch as well or a linear tronic CVT which is the one we have today actually and by the way though that linear tronic cvt does come with a seven speed manual mode if you were to go with the premium trim level and up and so of course we will be testing that out a little bit in this video as well but before we have some fun with that when it comes to zero to 60 time on this one approximately nine seconds flat for the sedan 9.2 seconds for the hatchback we're going to see how that feels in a little bit as well and as far as mpg numbers go 28 in the city 36 on the highway which is actually pretty impressive considering all-wheel drive does come standard but before we do that acceleration test I do want to mention there are some drive modes that do come with this one as well that is going to be labeled SI drive as Subaru likes to call it those buttons are located on the right side of the steering wheel there they are labeled S and I of course S meaning sport and I meaning intelligent they will adjust things like the shift points and the throttle response so if I press that S right now it is immediately going to downshift for me holding the RPMs in a much higher level giving you more power on demand essentially so that is what that is there for but so now having mentioned all of that like I said we do have the CVT there is a seven speed manual mode what I'm going to do to utilize that is to push the shifter all the way to the back and to the left it is telling me I'm in sixth gear right now it is going to display what gear simulated gear I should say this is a CVT after all but it is going to display that up there so what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway and let's put the paddle shifters to the test and let's see if this manual mode actually shifts for us. All right, so we are turning. We are in first gear right now. Let's see if it shifts. 3,500. Nah, it's not. All right, shift. Okay, not that bad. Paddle shifters are actually pretty quick, and it does simulate the shifting really, really well for a CVT. I will say that it almost really does kind of feel like an automatic transmission, which I like. That is pretty cool. Well done, Subaru, for that. So I'm just going to put the shifter back to the right here. It's going to give full control back to the Impreza. And what do you guys say? Let's do a quick little acceleration test here in our Impreza. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed in three, two, one. Adios. Well, it's loud. <laughs> it's not the quickest thing in the world, but yeah, that boxer engine definitely, uh, definitely gets up there. So. Anyways, CVT is always kind of interesting when you do an acceleration because there's no shifting, but not the quickest thing in the world. But hey, if you want quicker, just go with the WRX. But yeah, it'll do the trick though. It's going to give you good MPGs and of course you got all wheel drive. So that's a good thing. But 
to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 10.9 inch ventilated front discs in the back 10.8 inch solid rear disc if you go with one of the sport trims you're actually going to get 11.6 inch ventilated front disc so i like the performance upgrade with the sport trim levels a lot of other manufacturers out there they just make it cosmetic so well done subaru for upping the brakes a little bit on the sport trim as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes it actually comes in at 118 feet which quite honestly is dang impressive for comparison's sake the corolla comes in at 119 civic comes in at 113 feet so really anything under 120 is really really good suvs typically give you around 120 or even 130s so 118 feet is pretty good i will say that but when it comes to that braking feel it is perfectly fine definitely a good bite to the brakes there's no brake pedal delay or anything like that so once again on point subaru touching on suspension and handling in the front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back independent double wishbone type rear suspension once again with the stabilizer bar as far as the steering feel goes that is once again one of the first things i noticed when i got in this one the steering feel definitely leans towards the heavier side which i like it better helps you point you in the direction that you want to go it gives you a little better sportier of a feel i guess you could say a lot of times you will find loosey-goosey steering feels in other vehicles but that is definitely not the case in the Apprez, I love the steering feel in this thing. And dare I say a bold statement here, it's almost Mazda-like, so I really do like it, I will say that. But as far as ride quality goes, it actually is a little bit more than I expected. It's soaking up PA's road imperfections quite nicely compared to a lot of the other compact cars that I've tested in its class. So ride quality is actually pretty darn good. And as far as cabin noise goes, really not a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin. But like I said, when you really hit the gas, you will get that engine noise, which really isn't all that much of a bad thing to me. I like hearing the engine, but maybe you don't, but the exterior wind noise is definitely on point there. Touching on visibility, I absolutely love this visibility. Honestly, you can see perfectly fine out the back, but the reason I love it is because of that rear spoiler back there. And we'll get into the exterior in a second here, but love looking at that rear spoiler. That is pretty dang cool. But anyways, that is about it for the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Subaru Impreza. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Subaru Impreza finished in dark blue metallic case anybody was curious let's go ahead and start up front on this one when it comes to ground clearance ground clearance for the Impreza is going to come in at 5.1 inches to the sides multi-reflector halogen headlights are going to come with the base premium and sport trim levels they of course will come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there one less thing you have to worry about LED daytime running lights also coming stated across the board however if you were to go with that limited trim level of the Impreza you will actually get LED LED steering responsive headlights, meaning when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights will swivel based on your steering angle, better help illuminating what is around that bend, so you're less likely to hit a deer or something else, basically. It's always nice. And also with that limited trim level just below, you will also get fog lights down there as well so that's pretty cool but let's go ahead now and make our way to the side of the impreza and so to the side raised silver roof rails are going to come with the premium hatch and limited hatch power adjustable black side mirrors will come with the base trim body color side mirrors coming with the premium trim level and up and you will actually get integrated turret signals with those side mirrors if you were to go with the sport or limited trim levels and of course that is what you're looking at right now chrome door handles coming with the limited trim level only otherwise you will find body color door handles for all other trims then taking a look down at the wheel setup 16 by 6.5 inch wheels with covers coming with the base trim level 16 by 6.5 inch aluminum alloys coming with the premium sport is going to up that to 18 by 7.5 inch alloys and lastly the limited is going to come in at 17 by 7 inch alloy wheels so they're all essentially going to differ slightly dependent upon the trim level that you go with but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Impreza here so now since we are around back shark fin antenna coming standard of course just below that that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light that is going to come with the hatchback however you will get a trunk mounted spoiler with the sport trim level sedan and that of course is the one you were looking at right now one of the cool little things i wanted to point out about that spoiler i don't know if you guys can tell or not since we have a dark blue exterior but the center portion of that spoiler is actually a gloss black that is not body colored 
So a nice little accent color to whatever exterior color you end up going with on the Impreza. So did want to mention that to you guys, but just below that you will get some sport trim level badging. If you were to go with the sport trim level at least and just below all of it, a single exhaust outlet with a stainless tip if you were to go with the sport sedan or the limited sedan. So that of course is what you're looking at right now. But having said that, I do think you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. But now since we are around back here of the Impreza, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the trunk itself, or there's also a button to unlock it on the actual key fob. So either way is perfectly fine. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 12.3 cubic feet for the sedan, which of course is what you're looking at right now. However, that does jump up to 20.8 cubic feet if you were to go with the hatchback version of the Impreza. So I didn't want to mention that. Either way though, those rear seats do fold down. There is a 60-40 split. So you do have a good bit extra space there if you needed it at least. If you were to go with the hatchback, you also get two grocery bag hooks back there. There's also four cargo tie down anchors back there and a retractable cargo cover as well. But of course, you're not gonna get any of that with the sedan. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the rear legroom of the Impreza, 36.5 inches for both the sedan and hatchback. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. One of the things I like about that rear legroom is the back portion of those front seats. You can press in a little bit on that. So you do have a little bit extra knee room. If you're a taller person back there, as opposed to the hard plastic backs that a lot of other manufacturers will use so I did want to mention that too rear center armrest with cup holders for the rear passengers coming with a limited trim level only also for the sport trim level unlimited you will find dual rear USB charging ports for those rear passengers as well that's always something I personally look for but then make our way to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats with the base and premium sport cloth with red stitching for the sport trim level leather seating for the limited heated front seats for the premium trim level and up power adjustable front seat for the limited trim level only and as far as the seat comfort goes it's okay it's not the best i've ever tested and reason being is that there is no lumbar support unfortunately that would have made it so much more comfortable but it is okay it's certainly not bad it's not the worst i've ever tested so i don't want to say that but Taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the sport and limited trim levels only. And of course you get some cool red stitching if you were to go with that sport trim level too. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. Essentially all of your buttons are located on one side of the key lock, unlock, and that button to unlock the rear hatch or trunk, whichever. As far as that unlock button goes, it's actually gonna be the Subaru logo in the middle of the key fob there in case anybody was curious. But if you wanted a push button start, that is going to come with the Sport Limited and it's gonna be optional on the premium trim if you went that route. So all I am going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And something that once started up, when it comes to the gauge setup, it will do a full sweep upon startup, of course. Tachometer all the way to your left. Speedometer on your right. I like how the gauges are finished in red. It's a little sportier of a feel to go with our red interior we have here in the Sport. So that's pretty cool looking. Small digital display front and center to control what is on there. There's some steering wheel mounted controls on the left side there. Of course, you can check out what driving mode you're in up there as well. But also, there is a digital speedometer you can display up there if you wanted to how many miles you have left until you hit empty your fuel information at any given time when you need your next oil change the list goes on so quite a bit up there then make our way to overall interior quality there is a power moonroof that's going to be optional on the premium trim level and up we do have that option so it's letting in a little extra light for this video so i'm appreciative if you were to go with the sport trim level you're actually going to get aluminum alloy pedal covers as well automatic climate control is going to come with the limited trim levels only but having said that I kind of like the old school climate control that we have in the sport trim level here. It's just easy to use. Like anybody is going to figure out how to use it in a split second. So I kind of like it for that reason. Just in front of the shifter, you have a little bit of storage, an auxiliary port, two USB charging ports, and a 12 volt power outlet there. If you went with the premium trim level and up, your heated seat buttons are gonna be located directly behind the shifter. Just behind that, you're gonna have dual cup holders, of course, and within the center armrest, 
two more USB charging ports actually, and a 12 volt power outlet, and a decent amount of storage within that as well. But I do like the sport trim level. You have a carbon fiber look found on the doors. It's not authentic carbon fiber, but it does look pretty dang cool. Also a lot of red stitching in this one to tie in with the seats and the steering wheel and even the shift boot that I have here. So overall interior quality is pretty much as expected. And not only that, I just found there's home link controls. That is going to be optional, by the way. I forgot to mention that for up to three different garage doors found on the bottom portion of that rear view mirror, which also has a compass in the upper right hand corner there. That's pretty cool because the alternative is that rattling garage door opener that you clip to the sun visor, which can get annoying when you're driving down the highway. So I do like the home link controls found on the rear view mirror there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display on this one. There's actually two tech displays. There's an upper one, which I'm gonna cover first here. Essentially to control that, there's an info button on the left side of the steering wheel. If you press that, you could scroll through different things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty, what day of the week it is, what the date actually is. There's some off-road information, although I'm not sure if you're gonna go off-roading in an Impreza but it's there for you. Also your average speed, there's some weather information, radio information, the list goes on, but it's a good bit of information up there and I like that it's there. Just below that is going to be the main tech display and that's going to be either a 6.5 inch color touchscreen display for the base and premium trims or an eight inch color touchscreen display if you were to go with the Sport or Limited. Either way, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, even for the base Impreza, that's always nice. That means if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Impreza via USB cable and you got free navigation displayed up on that text screen as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs and there's a couple other compatible apps as well. If you wanted factory navigation system, it is gonna be optional on the Limited. You really don't need it maybe unless you live in the mountains or you do a lot of mountain driving perhaps I, I don't know something like that you can of course check out your radio information up on that screen as well and by the way the sound system will differ substantially amongst the trim levels four speakers is going to come with the bass six speakers is going to come with the premium sport and limited and then there is an eight speaker Harman Kardon sound system which is going to be optional for the Sport and Limited. And actually, we do of course have that option here today. That does come with 432 watts, by the way, with an external amp. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. The bass is on point in that Harman Kardon sound system. Ton of bass, really very good clarity actually as well. And it felt like a really well thought out sound system for the size of the Impreza. So well done Subaru, I like the Harman Kardon, that did well there. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display at least is when you do put the Impreza in reverse, of course you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the Subaru Impreza is an IIHS top safety pick when equipped with the LED headlights, essentially the top trim level there. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard, also a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. It's all pretty basic stuff at this point, but Subaru EyeSight is going to come with the premium trim level and up. It is gonna be optional on that base trim level, but what Subaru EyeSight is, is that's gonna give you pre-collision braking system, pre-collision throttle management, lane departure and sway warning, and lane keep assist as well well then if you were to go with the limited that's going to add a few things as well including high beam assist reverse automatic braking and a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert which by the way is optional on the premium and sport and we do have that there today overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the impreza of course you have the best all-wheel drive system standard on every single trim level and the fact that it comes standard at under twenty thousand dollars is a very good thing so great price point for this all-wheel wheel drive compact car. Android Auto Apple CarPlay coming standard on all trim levels is also a big plus, although wireless Android Auto at Apple CarPlay would be pretty darn sweet, so you don't have to hook it up with the USB cable. A lot of other manufacturers 
are just now starting to do that. So I hope Subaru follows that trend in the future because nobody likes those extra wires. But another constructive criticism of the Impreza is it is a bit slow. It's pretty much as expected with those engine specs that I rambled off at the beginning of the video, but maybe an optional turbocharged engine would be a pretty cool setup for the Impreza. But on the flip side, on the plus side, when it comes to driving dynamics, it has great braking and incredible handling, or should I say steering feel. The steering feel is wonderful. I love the heavier weight that the Impreza gives you, a little better feeling of being in control. But that about rounds out this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media. If you wanted to see which videos were coming next on the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.